1916 Navigator Training for Hospitals. I'm Carrie Bennett, one of the Quality Improvement Specialists at Health Quality Ontario, and joining me on the webcast today as my technical support and assisting with any questions that you might have are my QIP specialist colleagues, Terry Donovan, Margaret Millward, and Linda Valente. So how to participate today? Um, by clicking on the orange arrow, you can open and close your control pane. If you're hearing me now, you have logged in successfully using either your telephone or your computer. Um, if you are experiencing any technical sound difficulties, we recommend that you dial in using your telephone. Uh, once you click on the telephone option, you will see the telephone number and access code to dial in. Presently, everyone has been uh, placed on mute to maintain good sound quality. If you would like to ask a question, you can type it into the questions pane that's now highlighted, and we will have time for questions and discussion at a number of points throughout the presentation, as well as at the end. Today's webinar um, is being recorded and will be shared on the Navigator tutorial page within the weeks to come. I can hear a little bit of sound, so somebody might not be um, muted in the background. I just ask you that uh, if you aren't muted, if you could please um, mute your telephone or computer at this time. The objective of the QIP training is to identify and share the following. Overview of the QIP expectations for the hospital sector in 2015-16, and to show you the QIP navigator, how to get started, where to find resources, log in, and we'll populate one indicator from the beginning to the end. We also hope to help you understand the three components of the quality improvement plan, the progress report, the work plan, and narrative. And we'll, we'll walk you through how to prepare and complete these documents within the Navigator. Finally, we'll leave you with some resources and supports that are available to your organization. And as I previously mentioned, the slide deck will be available for your future use. So I've included many screenshots throughout this presentation with explanations so you can re reference them later as needed. So we're going to do two things at once this afternoon. We're going to uh, walk through planning your quality improvement plan as you would work through it in the Navigator tool. And as we walk through these, um, these stages of QIP development, I'll be talking about what's new for this current planning year. So we're first going to start with an overview of quality improvement plans. And what is the value of a quality improvement plan? By submitting your QIP to Health Quality Ontario, we as a system can begin to understand what progress organizations are making in achieving targets on priority improvement areas. The QIP provides rich information for the system to better understand how we collectively can spearhead improvement efforts. Quality improvement objectives may be similar across organizations. The QIP provides an opportunity to learn from your peers on the types of actions you can take to achieve quality objectives and to reduce the need to reinvent the wheel. In addition to being owned by the organization, QIPs are developed under the umbrella of a common provincial vision and provide a system-wide platform for quality improvement. This provincial vision is expressed through the priority indicators that are included in the QIP. These quality themes reflect Ontario's vision for a high-performing healthcare system. So we're just going to get started with our first poll and, sort of, and see how familiar everyone is with the QIPs so we get a sense of who's on the line with us today. Terry, if I could turn it over to you to start our first poll. Yes, so I will launch our poll. And if everyone can click on the most appropriate answer. So we've got about 76% voted so far. Oh, 85. I'll just give about another five or ten seconds and then I'll close it down. Okay. 
So we have um, 56 of you are very uh, familiar, have submitted a quip last year, 42% at somewhat, uh, you're on the quip team, and 2% not very familiar with the quip. So I'll give it back to you, Carrie. Okay, are we seeing my next slide? Yes. Okay, thanks. So thanks. So we have quite a, a version, a, a selection of people on the line. So um, for those of you that are very familiar with it, I, um, there may be some sections in Navigator. We'll be talking about enhancements to what you're used to, and also we'll be touching on um, what's new for 2015-16. And um, for those of you very new, a small percentage of you, um, there is always um, extra resources if at the end of this session you still are looking for some more. You can always connect with us through the QIP inbox and that um, contact information will come at the end of this presentation. So um, using the Quality Improvement Plan as a lever for change started with the hospitals in 2010 with the introduction of the Excellent Care for All Act as uh, those of you that have been part of this um, for the last five years do know. Um, and there has been a phased approach to the expectations around QIPs. And each sector, as you can see, is at a different stage. So this year, we can see that the long-term care homes are moving from a voluntary to mandatory QIP submission. And um, this is significant as each organization's QIP will include core transformational priorities where improved performance is codependent on collaboration with other sectors. The quality improvement plan analysis informs the work that Health Quality Ontario uh, quality improvement portfolio does. The QIP helps to identify quality improvement opportunities. Uh, it can catalyze quality improvement and work with other partners that are required to deliver on the implementation plan, build capacity and knowledge by providing information about trends, best practices, and experience with change ideas back to providers, and helps to connect uh, the quality improvement clinical community, bringing sectors together on common quality issues. As you can see, so the quality improvement plans are quite central to all the work that our quality improvement portfolio does. Um, before we start talking about uh, what is new for 2015-16, let's talk about uh, what we know is not changing. So the ministry has created a common integrated guidance document for all sectors, which is available on the EXA QIP page. We're not expecting this to change much, and we are anticipating its release later this week. There are some small changes, however, that I will speak to as we discuss the different QIP components in the Navigator. So what also isn't new is that we are using the, QI the Navigator to submit the QIPs this year. So let's look at what that looks like. The title of this slide provides you with a direct link to the Navigator homepage. You can also reach this page location by going into the Health Quality Ontario's website and clicking on Quality Improvement Planning and scrolling down to the Navigator button. Once at the Navigator homepage, you will see tabs at, across the top for home um, resources and sector quips. When on the homepage, there are also links on the left-hand side with information related to Navigator, about QIPs, and about HQO, and also here's your um, login access. We will first review the Resources tab. So you don't need to be logged in um, to access the Resources or the Sector's QIP page. We will um, first talk to the Resources tab. There are sector-specific tools uh, such, such as a link to the guidance document and previous QIP analyses. Other resources include links to other organizations and associations. There's also frequently asked questions, which breaks out questions relating to the navigator about general health, the QIP submissions, the data, work plan, as well as questions that will be coming out of these webcasts. And finally, there's a tutorial section where there's a video tutorial on how to use the navigator. 
This video is currently being updated and will be posted in December, so if you want to review any of this information later, it's available to you. So the sector quips, you also don't need to be logged in for this section. Here you will find all sector QIPs posted, so you can see what others are doing and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Each column here is sortable, so you can sort by year, by sector, by LIN, by the model or organizational type, and you can also search directly by organizational name. Once you're finished and um, if you'd like to conduct another search or sort, you just must hit the reset button. Your 2015-16 QIP will be located here only once it has been submitted and HQO closes the navigator to submissions. So to work on your 2015-16 QIP, you will now need to log in. Each hospital has been given a unique username and password. Your hospital's previous username and password remains the same as before. If you've forgotten your password, you'll click on the Forgot Password link, enter your username, and a temporary password will be sent to your registered email address. If you happen to forget both your username and your password, please email us at qip at hqontario.ca. The RQIPs page is where you can view your own organization's current and past QIPs. Users can check to see when the QIP was last modified and when the status and the status of the QIP, which will be submitted or in progress. Under the Actions column, you can view previous QIPs or edit and submit your current year's QIP. When you click Edit on your current plan, it will bring you to your QIP in the three components, which are the narrative, the work plan, and the progress report. The navigator will default to the narrative page, but we recommend beginning with reviewing your current performance in your progress report to inform your new plans for the coming year. So let's go to the progress report now. Every year as part of the QIP submission process, healthcare organizations are to submit a report on their organization's progress against the previous fiscal year's QIP priorities and targets. The progress report will be pre-populated with your previous QIP information. In February, there will be a data refresh and HQO will pre-populate the current performance where it is available. You will be expected to fill in the comments section and only the uh, current performance where it is unavailable. And you do this by clicking on the edit um, button to the right hand side of the screen. Health Quality Ontario is especially interested in the comment section to learn about the great work being done across the province and in order to promote capacity building. One of the key changes for this year is an enhanced progress report. So while the top of the progress report remains the same as it was in the previous years, as we've just gone through in the last slide, um, for each of the priority indicators this year, HQO will be looking for a little more detail on each of the change ideas. The navigator will automatically pull all indicator change ideas that were identified in your 2014-15 QIP work plan. They'll pull them automatically into the bottom of this template for hospitals to comment on. So you'll answer, was this change idea implemented as intended, and you'll respond a yes, no, um, and there's no value judgment on, on whether those um, change ideas were in fact implemented. We recognize that a QIP um, does co constantly fluctuate throughout the year, and we're just trying to get a better sense of what is working across the province. Organizations um, may also, of course, um, there's a section where you can insert new or additional change ideas that may have been developed and or tested after the QIP was submitted. Then once you have completed this window, please click Save and Close. HQO will use this new progress report to share key findings on effective change ideas and help guide future supports. 
This detailed change report is also what will appear on the sector quips page, so you can view this deal detail from your peers. You'll have the option um, as a hospital to export either this detailed progress report or the rolled up version that you've had in the past. So HQO's role with the QIPs is to highlight the organizations that are doing well and determine which change ideas are working and how they are best implemented. Also where things are not working so we can stop doing those or learn how to adapt them to make them work. We have the ability to look at the progress report from both an organization type perspective or a regional perspective. This current slide is just one example of a report that HQO can provide from the progress reports. Here we see the number of hospitals in each LIN that have reported a current performance um, worse than baseline in orange, maintained their baseline performance in yellow, and made improvement over baseline in green. At this point, I'm just going to pause for a minute and ask which types of reports would you like to see? We'll also take a minute to pause and check in um, with my technical support to see if there's been any questions that have come up so far um, about the revised progress report or anything else we've discussed up to this point. Please enter your questions and comments into the chat box now. So Carrie, it's pretty quiet so far. We've just had one question um, asking if a, a copy of the slide deck is going to be sent out following the presentation. Um, and uh, it will, a, a copy of the training slide deck here will be posted on the navigator under the resources tab under tutorials. Um, and there you'll find a, a copy of this training deck as well as the new uh, user manual. Um, so we're okay. We're getting some uh, comments here from from your questions. Um, so, for what types of reports would you like to see um, comparisons with other hospitals? Um, a list of changes that were uh, tested across a sector. Um, reports on initiatives that were not successful and why not. So um, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting one and, and, and what we sort of hope to learn as well with this new progress report. Um, there are a couple other uh, questions. Um, is the progress report focused only on priority indicators like last year? So there, your progress report will be pre-populated with uh, or will be populated with everything on your QIP. Um, the priority indicators are those that um, are the that must have a response. So similar to last year's expectations. There's uh, another question: When are the 2014-15 uh, progress reports due? So all three components of the quality improvement plan, the work plan, the narrative, and the progress report are all due by April 1st of each year. So when you're submitting your 2015-16 plans, you will also be reporting on the progress for the previous year. Okay, and uh, we have a question for partial implementations. Can we answer yes and give comments? Oh, most definitely. And we would also encourage organizations, we know many of these are, are multi-year strategies, so the more um, context you can provide in the comments section, the better. Okay, and a couple more. Um, when is the progress report available to us for data entry? Um, I would like to use this as a reporting tool for the Quality Council currently having to do uh, it elsewhere. Um, so I can take this one. The, uh, the progress report will be open as soon as we do open the navigator. We are uh, hoping that will be this uh, later this week, so please check back in um, later on this week. Uh, we're just waiting for those final uh, tweaks to be done to the ministry's um, uh, guidance, guidance material, material. And, then, and then we will um, open it. So once we open it, then all three components um, you'll be able to start uh, working in right away. 
Um, so the, a follow-up question, is the navigator down today? I could not log in. So um, yes, it's, it's closed while we're just doing the uh, finishing touches, uploading um, the, uh, you know, final resources and, and whatnot. So we um, uh, check back later this week and it, it, should, be, uh, it should be working. Uh, do we report progress on our maintain measures? Carrie, do you want to take that one? So you, um, you don't need to. The, the, um, the requirement was just that um, you would report progress on your improved measures. Having said that, there is a new, and I'll speak to that um, as, we go, as we go forward, the improve maintain um, column has been removed from the work plans. So moving forward so after this year, there will no longer be a, um, a designation between improve maintain indicators. And it's, it will be expected that anything on your QIP is an improvement priority and is actively being worked upon. Great. So I will, uh, I'll keep track of these and, and uh, check back in with you, Carrie, if you want to continue. Okay, thank you. Okay, so after reviewing the progress that you've made over 2014-15, we'll go into the narrative section. Remember that this is your document and it needs to reflect your local organization and it also provides the context to the priorities you're selecting in your work plan. So as before, this is the location where you can also upload your organization's logo and also export the narrative component of the QIP for your own use. There are several sections to be included in the narrative which are outlined in the guidance document, such as the overview, integration and continuity of care, and risk challenges and mitigation strategies, for example. From this uh, main narrative page, click on either the heading of the text box, either the heading or the text box, text box itself, and a text window will pop up. Here you can add free text or paste from Word. So last year we used um, one of the top text editors within these text boxes. However, it created um, many formatting issues within these boxes for organizations. Thus, this year, uh, we've removed the um, text editor, and there will be only a basic text function within these boxes. Therefore, uh, we recommend waiting until your narrative is complete within the navigator before exporting the document and then making all your formatting changes for public posting. Once you're finished with a section, um, you will hit save or close and close to close the text window, and it will take you back to the narrative template. At this point, I would like to point out um, the help text icons present within the navigator. There's question mark icons located throughout the documents, and if you click once on the help text, it will lock, and you can then move around the help text box um, while you type, and it always gives you a little more information about what's being looked for within that box itself in the navigator. To close the help window, click on the X in the upper right-hand corner. So what's new with the narrative section? Performance-based uh, compensation is, uh, has been given its own text box, and while it still is seen as within the accountability management section, this change has um, provided some clarity that we're looking for additional information on how organizational leadership is being held accountable for achieving the targets set out in QIP. For example, um, Beyond performance-based compensation, how frequently are the metrics in the QIP being monitored and discussed? Another key change within the narrative is the addition of the patient-client-resident engagement section. Many of you were already including this information on how you were incorporating the patient voice into your QIP priorities. Now it's just an official section. I thought we could take a pause here and discuss um, how, we, how you're engaging patients in quality improvement at your hospital. Please enter your response um, into the chat box 
And while you're doing that, we'll also take another check-in to see if there's other um, outstanding questions that have come through. Okay, so um, we have uh, patient family advisory councils listed um, <laughs> by a few hospitals. That's great. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the most uh, common way to engage the patient. Um, satisfaction surveys as well. Um, there's a community advisory group um, that has uh, been engaged for the QIP. And patient families sit on the unit-based quality team. Um, and there's 22 teams at, uh, at this hospital. That's great. Um, Post-discharge phone calls. Uh, Real-time patient experience surveys has been listed. Some great ideas. Um, including the quality councils at the program level, patient and family councils, members of QI team on improving patient satisfaction scores and surveys. Okay. Um, Carrie, there's one question here. The progress report is populated with Q3 data. Then since Q4 data will not be complete by April 1st, 2015. Okay. That's correct. So the progress report, current performance, the what will populate um, that for the priority indicators are the same time periods that are outlined in the indicator specifications document that's um, an appendice to the guidance document. Um, so it will, it should match and it won't um, be Q4, that's correct. So the comments um, just need to reflect the time period that it's relevant for. And we're really looking for that year over year progress. Great. That's it for now, Carrie. Okay, so that's um, that's it for the narrative. We'll move on then to the uh, QIP work plan. So the work plan highlights the organization's improvement initiatives and targets for the next QIP cycle. So as we were just talking about with the current performance, you want to set that target for what you anticipate that number to be for the time period that being looked at on those priority indicators. So the template's been designed with the flexibility for organizations to add organization-specific measures, but also contains a core set of priority indicators and themes that set a common vision. So as before, the QIP work plan has been designed to align with the model for improvement with the three essential questions driving the improvement process. What are we trying to accomplish? How do we know that a change is an improvement? And what changes can we make that will result in the improvements we seek? One of the changes that we have made with the work plan was an attempt to provide um, more column widths. And I know um, right now it's still a visionary <laughs> exercise looking at these slides, but we have tried to um, increase some space for the columns where possible. And that was based on um, the feedback that you gave us. And as I stated before, there's, as you can see, there's no longer an improve or maintain status column. So all indicators that are on your QIP are expected to be QIP priorities and actively worked upon. Additional changes to the work plan. Um, this year it will be clearer which indicators are priority indicators that must be responded to and which indicators are additional. So last year, um, we actually saw a dramatic rise in the number of additional indicators being selected by hospitals. And we believe that this may have been due to the fact that both priority and additional indicators were both populating the work plan template. So here you can see that this year, the priority indicators will be automatically visible and populated in red on your work plan. So it's obvious that these are priority indicators and they need to be responded to. 
And what we mean by uh, need to be responded to is that organizations still have the choice of whether or not they want to include a priority indicator. But if you are not including a priority indicator, you um, go to the very far right column of the change section under comments and just add um, a quick the quick rationale as to why your, your organization is not um, focusing on that priority indicator. During um, the outreach sessions, um, we did have a question about, um, you know, even if an indicator isn't relevant to our organization, do we need to do do we need to tell you tell you why we're not focusing on it in the comment section? An example of this is if you don't have an emergency department. And you do actually need to do that because um, the navigator doesn't know that context for your hospital. So you do need to, whether or not it's, and that's just a simple explanation then as to why that indicator isn't included. It's just that you don't have the ED. Um, also here you'll see that um, the additional indicators then, we've moved to a, um, a drop down menu. Um, where you see the arrows indicating though for this particular access there aren't additional indicators, but you'll see in different sections um, the additional indicators are still pre-populated for you and you can select them for your QIP, but you'll be selecting them from the drop-down menu. Both the priority and additional indicators will be pre-populated where possible by HQO in February as before. Also, as in the past, you can add other indicators by clicking on an Add New Measure. All other newly created or relevant indicators, these may be hospital or LIN-specific priority initiatives. So once you click on that Add New Measure, this, this pop-up box window will come. Um, these these other indicators may be similar to priority or additional indicators, but you might want to change one of the attributes, such as the population, the time period, or data source may have been changed in, in some way. And once changed, these indicators are no longer included in the provincial analysis done by HQO. They're seen as um, different than priority, as they're no longer standard or consistent with other organizations. And with this uh, text pop, this text box, you can see then the difference between a priority indicator. You see that everything is white. Uh, it's not pop. It's not pre-populated or anything grayed out. It's a blank slate to create uh, what is relevant to your hospital. And then finally, I just have this um, this slide included as a recap of the different types of indicators, where you can locate them within Navigator. And it's offered here as a resource within your slide deck. So what's new uh, with the indicators themselves? Um, so I did mean this to just come up in sections. I apologize. I'm throwing lots of information on this slide at you. Um, we'll talk about them one by one. So changes to the indicators themselves. In first. In line with changes that have been made to Accreditation Canada's um, medication reconciliation required organizational practice, um, it, the Accreditation Canada has an expectation that hospitals will be fully implemented, implemented with MedRec by 2018. So the language in the indicator specifications document for the QIPs has been changed um, for this MedRec at admission indicator. Previously, um, organizations could choose if they wanted to uh, work on MedRec or report on MedRec, I should say, by one program, service, or unit, um, or at the organizational level overall. So this year, we're asking everyone to report um, their MedRec rate at the organizational level. In the next slide, I'll, I'll walk through um, an example of how you can calculate this measure if you're not doing MedRec hospital-wide yet. So along with this change to the MedRec at admission indicator, 
um, medication reconciliation at discharge has been added to the drop-down list of additional indicators. And finally, the hospital service accountability agreements are moving from the acute percent of ALC days um, and using your chi high dad data to the ALC rate as defined by Cancer Care Ontario and using your wait times information system data. And in order to remain aligned with the HSAWs, the QIPs will also shift to this ALC rate indicator. However, due to the timing of this change, um, the previous percent ALC days has been pre-populated in the, in the navigator and therefore will not be a requirement of hospitals um, in their QIPs until 2016-17. So this year, hospitals um, have the choice to use either the previous ALC days indicator, which will be pre-populated in Navigator, or you can create the new ALC indicator as an other indicator. So I'm just going to go through, that's a lot of information there, um, I'm just going to go through an example of how to calculate um, medication reconciliation at admission and then we will break again and have some time for questions. So, um, as previously stated and in line with Accreditation Canada, all hospitals should be working towards full implementation of MedRec. As such, organizations that were previously reporting MedRec at admission for a unit, service, or program in their QIP should now aim to report current performance and set targets at the organizational level. So while you're asked to be to report this at a med rec, at an organization level, you may still wish to um, you may be on a rollout strategy and haven't fully implemented, and may want to focus your change initiatives and process measures on that on a, a subgroup of your organization. So if you have not implemented um, hospital wide, um, your hospital should calculate medical. MedRec in the following way. So first, you'll calculate current performance for the areas um, that are undertaking medication reconciliation, and then you'll weight the current performance to all admissions to the hospital. So an example, um, if we were going to calculate the current performance um, for the selected sample, that um, has, they've used one unit where 100 patients were admitted to that unit during the reporting period. And say of those 100 patients, 90 had a medication reconciliation completed. The hospital would then report um, that current performance for that unit is uh, 90 med recs out of 100 admissions, or 90%. So then your second step, we calculate the proportion that this sample covers of all admissions to the hospital for the same time period. So if, it, if the selected unit had 100 admissions during the reported period, and this, during the same period, the entire hospital, and I'm obviously doing this for ease of calculation, had a total of 200 admissions for all units, which includes the unit being studied, the hospital report um, then that the sample would have been based on 50% of the total number of admissions during the reporting period. So you have 100 in your um, sample unit, 200 total admissions to the hospital, and therefore um, to weight the current performance, you'll want to determine what is 50% of your medication reconciliation results. So 50% of 90, or the 45% for the organization. Um, so recognizing that this is maybe a significant change for several organizations and how they've reported on their QIP, you want to provide the context to this weighted medication reconciliation rate by describing the areas in which MedRec is being performed in the comments section of your work plan.
Okay, so at this point we'll just uh, take a minute. That was, all, I think, um, a bit of information. We'll, so we'll take a pause and see if there's any questions about the changes to MedRec or the ALC indicator or any other outstanding questions. So um, either we, we'll ask you to raise your hand um, in the or just to type in your question into the into the comments box. Okay, Carrie, I have um, I have two questions so far. Um, can you please repeat again what is what is the change to the ALC indicator? So what's different? <clears throat> so for this year, there, you can choose to not change to keep it uh, the way it is. But what the change is is there's um, the basically your the current way we look at ALC. It's just the acute ALC in your hospital. Um, the hospital service accountability agreements are switching to the more fulsome indicator, um, the one that uses wait times information system data. So it'll be um, not only acute ALC, but it'll include rehab and other areas. Um, so that is what will be the requirement starting in 2016-17. So we're just trying to um, have the quips uh, stay aligned with the uh, H saws. There will be some further information, I should say, in um, a frequently asked questions document that we that HQO will circulate and also have posted on the navigator. Great. Okay, we have a question. What exactly is meant by MedRec? Um, is it best possible medication history or the physician's sign off on reconciliation? So the definitions that HQO uses is in line with Safer Healthcare Now's definitions and calculations with both MedRec at admission and discharge. So I would recommend um, going to the Safer Healthcare Now website and um, looking at medication reconciliation. There's very detailed information about exactly how that's being calculated. Okay. Um, is med reconciliation on admission measured at 24 hours or 48 hours after admission? And again, I'd, I'd, for those detailed questions, I'd recommend you go, go to that Safer Healthcare Now website, which will outline exactly how it's measured. Okay. And we have that um, embedded in the Hover Help link as well when, when you're within that uh, indicator. A direct link, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, for the ALC, then, will it be rolled up performance measure or will it be one for rehab and one for acute? So when we move forward with it in 2016-17, it will be exactly how it appears on the hospital services accountability agreement. So if it's two separate indicators there, it'll be two separate indicators on the um, QIP. But I believe it's all of one. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I don't, um, there are a couple hands raised. I'm not sure um, if they they are current. Um, so Do you want to try and take them yeah. off mute and see if they have? So Janine, um, I'm going to take you off mute. Um, and if you have a question, Janine, your hand was raised. Do you have a question? Okay, I'm going to put down her hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and we have Paula. Uh, Paula, your hand is also raised. Um, I am going to take you off of mute to see if you have uh, a question still. Paula, can do you still have a question? Uh, Paula? I think I've complicated things with the hand raising. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think most people have been using the chat, so um, all hands are down now, so. Um, okay, 
If we did miss you, please go ahead and type your question in the chat box. We'll still have lots of time for discussion. Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. So moving on specifically into the change ideas section of the work plan, um, as before, you'll click on add new change idea. And Terry will be walking you through a, a live demonstration in the navigator uh, at the end of this. So if you click on the add new change idea, you'll, it'll open to this text box. Um, the change idea, the change ideas are, will be automatically numbered and um, we'd ask that you complete one, uh, one per change idea. So fill out all of these boxes for one specific change. You'll hit save and close and then um, you'll add a new change idea for your second change. So don't try to put all your different change ideas in this one template, but um, um, align your change idea with your methods and your process measures and your goals here. This is a specific focus, this area that um, we would like hospitals to uh, work on specifically with their QIPs as they prepare for 2015-16 and so that we can really get at the heart of what's working across Ontario. So um, there's just, you know, we just want to emphasize that there's, you know, two aspects of a really effective process measure. Um, we want to, I know all of you are so incredibly busy that you're just running and implementing, but what we don't do a great job of is really taking the time to whoop, um, to see, I'm giving you a hint, to clicking ahead, um, to <laughs> see <laughs> um, what's an effective um, change idea and what's really leading us to improvement. So we want to really ensure that we're measuring these changes as we're implementing. So we want change ideas that, uh, um, with goals that are, you know, have smart objectives. So they're they're specific, they're measurable, they're actionable, realistic, and time sensitive. Um, and really, to provide informative comments um, that include factors for your success and additional information describing any issues that may impact improvement activities or targets. And uh, this these comments will really provide. Um, to provide not only the context, but explain the reasoning behind um, why you're fo focusing on a specific, uh, clarifying the goal for the QIP. It also help, uh, the, the more detail we have, the more detail HQO can give back um, to hospitals and move improvement forward. So we do ask that organizations really are, it is a requirement to include process measures for each of the change ideas they identify and to measure whether or not the changes are being, that are being made are really, really leading us to the desired outcomes. So here my, my quick preview to our, our poll then is <laughs> um, we want to just see, recap um, and see if you remembered then which of the following attributes is not included in the definition of a SMART goal. And I'll ask Terry to kick off our poll for us. So, Terry, actually, um, that poll's, uh, we, we have the uh, priority indicator poll. Oh, um, so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll skip that one. You know what, hospitals are all SMART, they get it anyway. <laughs> Yeah. You all knew it was number two, <laughs> and it was we could while well, we could measure monthly, the M really does stand for measurable. So we want these goals to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time sensitive. So finally, we'll um, we'll talk about the submission process. So um, once you've completed all three components of the QIP. You'll go back out to the RQIPs tab and we'll hit on this submit button that's circled here in red. When you hit uh, the submit button, one of two things will happen. You'll either get a pop-up window that will appear um, where you'll enter the names of the people accountable for sign-off on the QIP. So your CEO, the board chair, and the quality committee chair. 
And um, by doing importing these three names, that is the act um, that does represent that they've actually signed off on the QIP for HQO's purposes. Or um, if there's any omissions that uh, things that we've forgotten to include in one of the three components of the QIP, you'll um, get these. Um, submission incomplete messages, and whether it's in the work plan, in the narrative, in the progress report, where the omission is. Um, so it'll clearly, as uh, it won't be a guess, guesswork like it kind of was last year, it's um, very clearly going to tell you which indicator has the uh, missing information, um, and will tell you exactly what piece of information is missing, so that you can success successfully submit. So um, finally, before we get into the, de uh, the demonstration, I just wanted to point out um, that there were uh, fall outreach sessions. HQO um, did attend um, the OHA uh, quality and patient safety lead um, sessions to go through kind of what's in, what's new um, information. If you weren't able to attend, I'd be happy to uh, distribute those slides to you. Um, just send send us an email to the QIP inbox. So as always, that's your default for any information that you're looking for or any additional support you need. Um, you can always email us at QIP at HQOntario.ca. I've included the direct link to the Navigator homepage here where you've seen um, the resources tab contains everything pertinent to hospital QIPs. As well, um, the quality compass, um, and we're working to align uh, all the products within HQO, that the quality compass is anticipated to include um, all the best evidence for each of the priority indicators. Um, so please keep checking back to the quality compass as we uh, add and update the indicator information there. So at this point, um, as we transition over to the live demonstration, were there any um, outstanding questions? Um, Carrie, there's just there's a few. Um, I'll let you take a look at them when I do the demonstration. But I think they're mostly specific to the two new uh, indicators, like the MedRec and the ALC. And I, I suspect most of that information is um, going to be in the in the uh, indicator technical specifications when it's released. Um, that's probably the best um, you know place to answer them. But I'll 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 let you take a look at it when uh, when I do the demo. Okay. Thanks. There was a recent OHA bulletin um, that went out within the last two weeks um, that had a little more detail on that. Um, we will include information in the frequently asked questions. So I think you'll find, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at those specific questions, but there will be lots of information on what's um, new and different. Great. Okay, well I, uh, for, for the, um, uh, newbies that are with us that may not uh, be familiar with um, the Navigator. I will go through a quick uh, demonstration about how to um, add an, an indicator. Uh, so we're going to uh, again. Um, this is just the this is the pre-production site because uh, the the live site is is currently um, being finalized. So I will log in to our test account. Um, you'll click in the login. Uh, this reminder message will come up. So, so we'll use this as a way to um, message any key important updates uh, throughout the year. Um, so right now, if you were to log in to the Navigator and get to this, it just says that we're still waiting on the guidance material and, and specifications and to check back this week. So um, just a reminder that uh, there's a new uh, user manual and the uh, pre-population and the CLIP on uh, Ontario. So once everyone's logged in and seen this, um, you know, we'll, we'll take it down um, and update it uh, accordingly with key messages. So to get rid of it, you just click on that little X up there. 
Um, so Carrie went through the resources um, and uh, the sector quip. So I'm going to focus on working on the quip. So you'll go to your quip submission. And uh, again, here's the dashboard. Um, you'll see the um, previous year's quip. It is view only now. And you'll want to work on the 2015-16 quality improvement plan, which is in progress. And um, so it defaults open to the narrative. Um, and again, all of the uh, question marks have uh, hover help with uh, information. Um, you click on the hover help here. If you, if you click on the question mark, this will stabilize that uh, window. And if you move your cursor to the top and get the four-pronged uh, arrow, you can, you can move this around. And if there is any scrolling to be done, um, you, can, you can scroll. And again, um, X at the right top. If you were going to uh, want to add information in there, you click on the box, or you can click on the heading. Um, and again, um, for that hover help, click on the question mark. You can move this over to the side and stabilize it. Um, and uh, it'll be there to the side to remind you um, what it is we're looking for. So. Um, Uh, you'll notice there there's a little red squiggly mar uh, mark for a, um, a spelling error. It is a basic uh, spelling um, error for you. But if you save it with um, save and close with the error in there, then it will show up. It's, it's, um, it won't remind you the next time you go in. It's, it's, it's that first stage of defense, I guess, for a spelling error, and, and that's it. No forgiveness. No, yes. <laughs> um, so you can hit save and close. And then your uh, information will show up there. Um, so again, more than one person can be in the QUIP uh, working on it, um, you know, in different offices or, or areas, um, going collaboratively and, and update it uh, throughout, throughout the QUIP season process. Um, and uh, if I was to go back to that dashboard, we have turned up um, this um, status and, and um, um, the progress here. So now you'll see one out of 10 of the headings. Um, I, I guess probably completed isn't the best word because it's not really complete. It does not um, measure certainly the, the quality of information you put in there, but it does let you know that um, at least one of those headings has, has been worked on. So. That was not turned on last year, and we've, we've finally turned that up. So, um, and uh, so just to show you um, one of the hover helps with some uh, information in it. Um, so the performance-based compensation. Um, again, there's lots of information here. And at the bottom, for more information, um, the Ministry of Health website. Um, and we've tried to put those. Uh, hyperlinks in there right at your fingertips so that um, this update on performance-based compensation, it's right there. Um, and then you click back to the navigator and it's there. So uh, wherever we've been able to, we've uh, tried to put that information um, very uh, accessible for you. So that's, uh, that's the work, uh, sorry, the uh, narrative. Um, the work plan, I'm going to uh, show you the um, indicators in the in the drop down list so um, again these um, uh, indicators are, are located here now this is um, this test site has uh, multiple sites and organization view all so if I was just wanting to look at site one um, I can click on uh, on site one and uh, and then that'll help me focus more just on one site um, so the majority of the additional indicators, they're sitting in the, uh, in the safety domain, um, the indicators down here. So this is where our um, new indicator for the uh, medication upon discharge, um, hand hygiene, et cetera, et cetera. And 
Although these are in the drop-down, in order to have them stay visible on your quip, you just need to put in um, a target performance that is going to trigger um, the tool to, to notify it that it is uh, an indicator that you're going to work on, and then it would, um, it would show up. So for example, if I put in um, for the uh, absolute target for hand hygiene, um, so let's say our current performance was 80, and our absolute target. Um, again, I'm going to go over here to the absolute target uh, hover help. And uh, we've, we've really tried to put a lot of information um, to, to help you with your target setting. So um, we've included here what the provincial average is. Um, there is evidence and form resources. If we click on that, it'll take us right to the quality compass with uh, hand hygiene. If I go back and look at the resource for indicator standards and click on that, um, this one takes a little bit longer to, uh, to load. Then there's the uh, hand hygiene um, indicator standard. So um, again, we've, we've tried to put this all at, at, uh, at your fingertips. Um, there is no benchmark, but the average is up to 86.2. So I want to... Um, put 88 and my target justification to um, achieve better than provincial average of 86%. So save and close. And now that will also allow it to be um, exported if you were to print it as well, wouldn't it? Yes, once you put in the target and, uh, and, and you've triggered that it is an active um, indicator that you're going to work on, it will export. And what, are the, what is the black part? That's a new column. That there is the, uh, the ID. And uh, as, as Carrie had shown, in the, when you go to submit, um, if there are any omissions, they, um, it will guide you to where exactly those omissions occur. So it'll be ID um, 6, which you'll see is total margin. And it'll tell you that total margin is missing um, um, you know, either any information or if you're not working on it, then the comment section. Thank you. So I will work on uh, readmissions here. Uh, again, this area here is, is grayed out because it is a priority indicator with a predefined definition. Um, so for current performance, I'm going to put in 16. Um, I'm going to take a look at this absolute target. Um, so any special notes in there. Um, so the provincial average is 16.4. Um, there is no benchmark. The year before it was 16.3. Um, again, we have some uh, resources for the indicator, which you can look at, or evidence informed. Yeah, you got to click on that question mark to stabilize it. Um, the transition uh, site. So. Um, that will help you in um, deciding, uh, hopefully, in setting your target. So we're going to put 11.2. Now, you'll notice here um, for relative target, so this is cal calculated automatically. And uh, it just helps to uh, give that um, uh, visual on, on what kind of target you're setting. Um, so it's the uh, relative target between your first number or current performance to your new number, which is your target. Um, so for target justification, and save and close. And you'll notice the information is in there. And you also may notice that we reduce that dark blue shading that um, we heard uh, loud and clear. And, and it was uh, very hard to see behind. So we've, we've reduced it um, so that you can see what is, uh, what is behind there. So that was one of our enhancements um, over the summer. So uh, with the change idea, the change number here, once you hit save, that will automatically um, populate 
and we'll put in some change ideas. And for methods, so again, this is describing what um, and how it's going to be done. Again, spelling. And process measures. Lucky you're a better typer than I am, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> we were giving some tips earlier today. Uh, a number of us who work in the quality improvement plans all the time often use double monitors because you might have a document such as the um, quality improvement compass or um, you know, maybe your last year quality improvement plan open at the same time that you're trying to work on this one. And um, also because they're very uh, large documents, <laughs> it, it sometimes is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And the good news is you can copy and paste from, uh, from, other, from other documents. From um, but We're processing, yeah. But one thing we do uh, caution is putting within your plan, and I, I don't think we saw it as much in the hospital um, quality improvement plans, but um, see above. See above, see above, or, or... Well, and the other thing was there were some lovely graphics that people put in, particularly in the narrative, mm -hmm. and unfortunately it won't hold any pictures or tables or... I mean, it wouldn't it be great if we could put run charts in there? But <laughs> well, I, I think we're not quite ready for it. no. But it's it's on it's on our wish list. It's mm -hmm. on it's on our radar most definitely. Um, Keep it to basic text. Yes, yes. So that is a a, a, a completely filled in indicator, if you wish. Um, and again, in order to uh, in order to submit, you would have to fill in um, the entire row. It is basically an all or nothing. If you start the indicator, um, you know you need to fill in the uh, target, the target justification, and then all um, four of the uh, areas in the change uh, on the change side. Um, again, unless, of course, you're not going to focus on that priority indicator, then you can simply, um, so say for ALC, um, I wouldn't fill in the target or the uh, target justification, but in the comment section, um, I would just provide the rationale. We are not uh, focusing on this priority indicator this year as we are well above current uh, provincial benchmarks. For the additional indicators in the drop-down, you do not have to worry about that. If you do not put in uh, your target performance, then um, you're not triggering the tool that you're using it. So, um, yeah. So are, are there... Uh, uh, Carrie went through how to add um, a new measure. Again, um, click on the, the new measure. You basically have a blank slate, um, and you do need to put in um, the information as far as um, the objective, um, your measure indicator, and uh, all the units, uh, all the attributes here. 
Uh, we do have a, a list of, of attributes that you can pick from. If you don't see it listed there, you can leave it in, um, as other, but in other here you would specify. Um, so it may be uh, maybe, you know, children or a certain, um, uh, sorry, not uh, for a uh, unit of measure, I think it's going, you're going to find um, the majority of them in here. Um, but for population, if, it, um, if it's not listed in here, then you could keep it as other and then um, put in children or specific population. Um, data sources are listed there. And for time period, when you choose your time period, um, you do need to specify here. You'll see the little red asterisk. Um, you do need to specify what, um, what quarter um, or whatnot that you're choosing. So. Um, there's also collecting baseline if you do add any new indicators or uh, for the first time are focusing on an indicator, you can click on the collecting baseline button. Um, and as well, we do um, have added suppress this year. So, um, and as per CHI-HI and uh, Ministry of Health guidelines, uh, the suppression rules apply to all indicators where the numerator is less than 5 and greater than 0 or the denominator is less than 29. And uh, so that will show up as an, um, as an X. And so that's to, uh, um, due to privacy reasons, um, you'd like to suppress your data. Or when we pre-populate, if you see an X in your uh, work plan after February when we when we pre-populate, then that just means the data has been suppressed. Um, so again, I would check out um, the absolute target hover help. That's where we have uh, um, tried to add uh, current performance and any benchmarks and uh, direct links to resources um, for you. So that uh, will hopefully help you set your targets. Um, so that uh, the delete measure button can be used whenever you um, are trying to put in a, uh, a new indicator that you put in. If you want to delete it, that's fine. Um, but uh, you will not be able to delete any of the predefined um, indicators. And uh, again, all of this information with, with snapshots and snippets are in the new uh, user manual that will be on the resources page. So if you were to log in right now and go to the resources, um, it, uh, I don't believe they have been updated, but uh, by, the, by this week when you successfully are able to log in, um, everything will be refreshed and you'll have the information there. I like those clear buttons as well. So if you thought maybe when you started that you were going to be working on something and you wanted to change it and you weren't sure, sometimes you have extra characters or spacing in that you don't see, that you can use those clear all fields. Or I think it was in the measure one. Oh, so yes, if you were starting to work and you had your, um, you know, current performance in there and then um, your, your target and had started to put in target justification and then decided, you know, you weren't quite sure about that um, current performance or, or information or, or you were going to uh, delegate it off for someone else to work on and, and uh, wanted to start scratch, you can clear all fields and although it won't erase or delete the measure, um, it will erase um, any the current performance, the target, and the target justification that you've put in there. So that's a bit of a, a, a shortcut, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, for the uh, work plan, um, we have tried to reduce the amount of formatting that needs to be done with uh, with the export. Um, it's it's still not perfect. There's always going to be a little bit of of um, formatting the columns, but we've uh, we've tried to improve that somewhat and reduce the amount of clicks that it will take um, organizations to do that. So, I think those are the. Uh, the, the key the key areas. Is there any other uh, questions regarding the um, demonstration or, or would anyone like to see anything specific within the navigator? Kind of like the Vanna White opportunity you can <laughs> <laughs> carry this go into a field or a section if you wish. 
So just checking the uh, the questions box, and I don't see I don't see any. Um, as as the hospitals are going on to year five and have used the tool, um, I'm you know apart from some enhancements that we've made based on feedback, I don't I don't think um, I don't think there's anything terribly new um, that should cause any issues or concerns. So Carrie, do you not? Yeah, I'm not seeing stuff? any other questions coming in or any other comments. So I think we should give these uh, valuable for folks 45 minutes back <laughs> in their day. That sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. So please, uh, please check back um, within a couple days to uh, to the navigator, and um, that red. Uh, notification once once that's gone you'll know that you're able to get in um, but if you log in and you see the please note um, you know we're still waiting on the guidance materials then uh, um, then you'll know you're not able to uh, to access the 2015-16 quip yet but um, it, it's it's close it should be this week so please check back thanks for joining us today everyone thank you have a great day